Welcome to Keep It Pro Training Call, brought to you by Networking Wisdom, featuring Ramacio Fulcher. Thank you all for joining us. My name is Monique, and I'm introducing Ramacio, the creator of Networking Wisdom, and the reason for this call each and every Sunday at 4 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for four years. On this call, you will learn the skills to be successful in network marketing and in life. Ramacio Fulcher is a well-respected international leader, coach, trainer, and much sought-after mentor. He is a highly successful entrepreneur with 750,000 people globally in his network and has accomplished over $1 billion in sales. Ramacio is a leader and a top earner. He's also a top 50 worldwide earner in MLM. At the tender age of just 25 years young, Ramacio earned his first million dollars He's now a multimillionaire and has helped countless individuals. This man knows how to make money, and he knows how to make money fast. What we all like most about him is his love for God and for mankind. He enjoys having fun and sharing his wisdom. He's a millionaire, millionaire mentor, a leader of leaders, and coach of coaches. Without further ado, I introduce to some and present to others our mentor and friend, the California Kid, the Marketplace Minister, Mr. Ramacio Fulcher. Ramacio, have you joined us? Absolutely. I'm here. Can you hear me loud and clear, Monique? Yes, we can. All righty. Thank you so much for being our gracious host week in and week out. We love you. We appreciate you. I want to welcome everybody that's on the line, whether you're back again or this is your first time. I want to highly, uh, let you, highly encourage you, go ahead right now. I want to take 90 seconds. I want you to text two, three, four people. You've got to jump on this call. You've got to jump on this call. Just send out the text message right now. Be obedient enough. Send out that text. I really believe some people are really going to be tremendously blessed by the message that we're getting ready to speak. It's perfect timing. It's going to be delivered in the perfect manner. It is actually, this is it. Go ahead and send out a quick text message. I don't, send it out to whomever you want, two, three people, really quick. Hey, look, you've got to jump on. You've got to hear this. You've got to hear this. Listen, we know that we record this call. We record it every single week. We've been doing it for four years. The uh, recording is going to be uploaded. You'll be able to re-listen to it at your leisure. While you guys are sending out those text messages, let me just, for those of you that may or may not know, uh, we teach on two specific things every single Sunday. Number one, we teach you the specific skills that you need to get yourself to the top of whatever company that you are promoting. The second thing that we teach is life skills. We firmly, firmly, firmly believe that as you grow as a person, everything else around you grows automatically. In other words, as you grow personally, your business will grow automatically. All right? So go ahead, send out those texts. Please follow the instructions. Send them out really quick. Just jump on this call. Listen, you can't, you can't control who will get on the call and who won't. But what you can do, you can control your intention. You can control your effort. Send it out. Send it out right now. I'm telling you guys, you're going to be eternally blessed by what it is we are about to discuss right now on this call. Guys, this is the fourth week edition of a series we started four weeks ago entitled Do It Now. Now, that title in and of itself, I believe, if you're really listening to me, if you're really paying attention, I'm talking about, you know, if, if your intentions are, listen, I'm taking my time to be on this call. God, I, I, I pray that something is said that stirs my faith. Something is said that will give me a solution to a challenge I've been having. Something is said that will literally be confirmation for something I've been deliberating. You know, one of the biggest questions that many of us, we, 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 we wrestle with is hearing from God. You know, we all, let's face it, we all believe in God. Now, to what level you believe, that's going to be dependent upon your faith. But everybody, I would like to assume, believes in God. And follow what I mean, guys. Most people believe in God. But what level of belief you have is going to determine on your faith. And so I can tell you this, guys, 
uh, this topic that we're, that we're talking about right now, do it now, I really believe is confirmation for a lot of people. Now, you may say, confirmation for what? I don't need to know what my words are confirming in your spirit. All I need to know is that I need to be obedient to do what I'm told to do, and that's what I'm doing. That's what I'm doing, okay? So I can tell you the title of this series. I know somebody has been deliberating, and don't think you're too good for the message. If you're thinking that, then I can definitely tell you this message is just for you. (laughs) If you've got a thought, oh, this is such a cool little call, no, 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 no. Did you hear the title? This is the fourth week. And the name of it is Do It Now. Now, you may be thinking, whoa, that's pretty bold and provocative. I might concur with you. <laughs> Do it now. But wait till you hear what the theme of today's call is. You see, the title is already in itself. Uh, just, you can hang up just hearing the title. Just the title of the call is enough to just say, you know what, that's it. I got my answer. But when we get into the theme of the call, and the theme of today's call is kings and queens speak and slaves don't. Today's call is going to be absolutely amazing because I know that, as I said moments ago, most people believe in God. You say, well, why are we talking about this, man? I just was hoping that Ramasio was going to drop some nuggets about what I need to say and what I need to do so I can make more money and, and really get my life on track and, and get things better, you know, get, get things going in a better direction. Well, I am. Have you ever noticed many times the thing that you thought you needed, the thing that you thought you needed, have you ever seen where, you know, you, you were hoping to get, you, you, you came in the door looking for one thing, and by the time you end up leaving, you got a whole different thing, and you didn't, you didn't even know that that thing had anything to do with that thing. And you came in the door looking for this thing over here because that's what you thought you needed, but then God actually ended up showing you, you know, you need this, and if you get this, that will automatically be taken care of. And that's why I'm going to spend the time today to dive into something that I know every single one of us needs to know. Now, guys, you know I'm always typically a positive and happy, excited person. You know that's my nature. If you don't know me by now, that's me. But I got to tell you, guys, this right here, I am over the moon excited. I'm beyond excited. You, I wish you could feel me through the frequency on this call right now. I am over the moon I mean, literally, guys, I, I can hang up right now, and I'm done all year. I got it. But I, I'm taking my time because I want to teach this. You say, teach what? Hang on, it's coming. Wait for it, wait for it. Again, the theme, kings and queens speak, and slaves don't. Slaves don't. And so I know that a lot of you have things going on. Let's talk about the things. Money. We're in one of the biggest catastrophes the world has ever seen. People need money. Okay? We've got health. We've got a, we've got a major, 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 major health issue going on right now where literally people are dying, people are getting infected, all sorts of things going on. So health is an issue. Okay? Money is an issue. All right? Relationships. You know, relationships, obviously a very, very, very sensitive topic. You know, relationships make life go round. We've got relationship issues. Okay, we've got, we, we've got a whole bunch of other issues. We've got a lot of issues going on, a lot of challenges happening. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, but thank God this call is about the answer. I want you to say it after me, the answer. Say, give me the answer. See, I'm all about solutions. I hate it when people spend too much time telling me what their problems are. I wish you would speed up the story and get to the answer because that's what I really care about. That's going to make the difference in your life. And that's what we're going to talk about. But I want you to, again, focus in on the theme of the call. Kings and queens speak and slaves don't. All right? Now, let's go back to God real quickly. 
And let's, let me give you a crash course real quick of something that I want you to stop whatever it is you're doing. I want you to pay attention. As I'm speaking, I'm sharing something that is exactly what you need. It's exactly what you've been looking for. You probably didn't ever assume nor expect it would be delivered on a free phone call from somebody you don't even know. You would never, but see, that's all the more to let you know how real God is. You didn't pay a dime to get on this call. Chances are you probably won't even see me. But you're hearing me, and that's why I'm saying faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. I want your attention. I want your attention. I'm going to keep it to, I'm going to give it to you very simple. Number one, God created the world, period, point blank. Now, I'm going to talk slow because I need you to catch, I need you to catch this. Now, remember, where we're going to end up, let me just fast forward real quick before I rewind, where we're going to end up, what I'm talking about right now is tailor-made for whatever situation you're going through right now. Whatever challenges or things that are going on that you want to be better, what I'm talking about right now is the answer. This story is not some boring fireside Christmas tale that I'm telling. No, this is on time, what I'm talking about right now. This is it. So that's why you want to pay attention. Number one, God created all of mankind. This is a fact. Take notes. Write it down. He created. Let's talk about we all know that God is perfect. We know that God is not a man. God is a spirit. He's perfect. God is not a God that should ever lie. God is not a God that mani- manipulates. God is not a God that likes white people more than he likes Mexicans. He's not a God that likes Italians more than he likes Russians. God is a God of principle. What he will do for one, he will do for another. This is a fact. Write this down. God created all of mankind. He's perfect. Okay? Number one. Number two. Number two. When God created Adam, Let's assume all of you by now have heard the story of Adam and Eve. First man of its kind, Adam. God created him from dust. And God created Adam. When he created Adam, God transferred all the power that God had to create the sun, the moon, the stars, He then transferred all of that into man. Write that down. So God transferred the power. He transferred it. In other words, God created the sun, the moon, the stars, the water, the mountain. He created all of that first. And then he said, I'm now going to create man. And he created man. And it was Adam. This is a fact. And he transferred the power. All the power. Write this down. I want you to underline this. He transferred all the power. Notice what I said. Not some of it. All the power. He transferred it to man. And he said, Adam, you now take, you now have dominion over everything. Everything. Now, you may be thinking, what does Adam have to do with me? Stay, just wait for it. Wait, it's coming. So you were created, you and I were created in a perfect splitting image of God. Now, let's go a little further. God told Adam, Listen, you are to be fruitful and multiply the Garden of Eden. I'm keeping this real simple for you. Write that down. Be fruitful and multiply. Write it down. Be fruitful and multiply. This was a command. This was an order. This was a mandate. 
This was a mandate that God gave to Adam. Be fruitful and multiply. Fruitful and multiply. You got to write this down. But God also told Adam, do not eat from this specific tree. Long story short, we know what happened. I'm just going to fast forward. Adam bit the apple. He bit the apple, and that was the tree of sin. When Adam, watch this, here we go. When Adam bit the apple, that was the first time in humanity when sin has now showed up on the scene. That was the first time sin had ever occurred, any sin. It was the first time Adam disobeyed an order from his father. When that happened, all sin. Now, this is when the story gets real good right here, baby. This is when it gets real good, and it gets real personal right here. All sin. Write, somebody write this down from whoever's taking notes. All. I want the word all underlined three times. All sin came into play. All sin. So that means all of the sins that you and I know about and all of the sins that you and I don't know about that we do, all of them started a long time ago. It all started with Adam over 2,000 years ago. Started a long time ago. So when Adam bit the apple and sin came forward, this is the next very important point that I want you to write down. When that happened, this is when Adam, he fell. And I don't mean physically fell. I mean he spiritually fell, meaning remember all the power that prior to him biting the apple that he had? He now lost some of that power because of a sin he did. Now, what's my point that I'm getting across here to you? Before he bit the apple, he was created in perfection. He was perfect. That's right. Adam was created from perfection. He was created with perfection. He was perfect. He was perfect. He had all the power. God said, I'm transferring all the power to you. All you have to do, Adam, is you declare what you want it to be, and that's what it'll be. It'll be called a zebra. It'll be called an elephant. It'll be called a, a, a rhinoceros. It'll be called a giraffe. It'll be, Adam, what you call it to be because you have the power. He said, I'm giving you the power. All right? So now Adam, he's sinned. And now... Adam, because of a sin that he did, this is the first time, you've got to catch this, guys, this is the first time that Adam now, all of a sudden, he's sitting there and he feels a different emotion that he's ever felt before because he disobeyed something that was told of his father to do, and he disobeyed it. So now he's having to wrestle with all of these feelings. Here we go, baby. Here we go. And this is when all sin was born. Let's talk about sin. Sins of shame, sins of guilt. I mean, we can talk for hours about sin, right? I'm talking about all these inner feelings that you and I wrestle with. Sins of I'm not enough. What do you mean you're not enough? You were created from royalty. You are a king. You are a queen. Well, wait a minute. I don't feel so much like a king or queen. I don't have any money. I can't keep, seem to keep a relationship. I, I, I don't feel like a king or queen at all. That sounds great. Hold on. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'm not done yet. I'm not done yet. Stay with the story. You were created from royalty. When, Adam bit the, when he bit the apple, this now all of a sudden is the reason why a lot of us get so confused. This is, this is the reason why a lot of – because the sin – that now gave birth to all sins is the biggest reason why 
low self-esteem, low self-worth. This is the biggest reason why it's hard for people, it's hard for people to get their self back in the right standing so that they can now have their power back. Let me say it again. Because of sin and the devil, or we call him the enemy, the devil, whatever word you want to call him, is the father of lies. He's a trickster. That's what he is. Now, I wish I had more time today, but I want to stay on point here. The devil, the enemy, is the father of lies. He's a trickster. His job is to make you feel like you're so fat that you could never be worthy. His job is to make you feel like all these dark and demonic and negative thoughts about your money, about your relationship, about your health, about where you live, about your children, about your sexuality, all of these negative, about your promotion that you're after, this is his job, is to convince you that you're not worthy, that you just can't do it. You're not fit. I'm so sorry. You don't qualify. You have no experience. Everybody in your family was broke. This is just what it is. So repeat after me, says the devil. It is what it is. This is what the devil says. Just come on, come on, come on, say it. This is what the devil tells you. It is what it is. That's just the way it is. It's always been that way. That's all I've ever known. So you say, Romacio, what's the problem? And, again, I'm not just talking to broke people. I'm talking to every single one of you listening live, and I'm talking to especially all of you that are going to listen to the replay. I'm talking to you. The problem is, is that people don't look at themselves the way that God sees you. Write this down. I'm giving you the problem before I give you the solution. Don't worry. I'm going to give it to you. People don't look at themselves the way that God sees them. Instead, what we see is we see all the reasons why it's not happening for me why it hasn't happened, why it might not, most likely won't happen. We literally get sucked in, thanks to social media and thanks to uh, humankind, we get sucked into, watch this, watch this, we get sucked in to what we see, to what we hear, to what we taste, to what we smell, and to what we touch. We get sucked in to our five senses. Write that down. And what did I tell you a minute ago? God is not a man. God is a spirit who's perfect, who everything he's ever done is perfect, including creating you and I. But because of sin that came into the mix, that now took a perfect world and made it imperfect because of sin. You got to get this. If you, I want, I'm talking slow. I want you to get this. If you need to re-listen to this replay three, four times, man, I want you to do it. You got to get this. All right. So let's now let's keep going. So Adam, he's now imperfect. He was created perfect. But now he's imperfect. And now all of a sudden, the power that Adam had, he lost it. It got taken away. It wasn't as effective as it once upon a time was. And let's just keep going so I can give you the short version. And then God and his mercy, write this down, God and his mercy and his love for you and I, according to John 3.16. God said, here's what I'm going to do. Now, you, got to, you, you, you guys, you, guys, you, you got to catch this. You got to catch this. God says, hey, listen, I'm going to take a lady. Her name is Mary. And I'm going to impregnate her, but she's never had sex with this man named Joseph. I, I'm going I'm to do this, says God. I'm going to do this. And all of a sudden, 
out, and the angel came to Mary and said, hey, listen, girl, you're pregnant. And she says, what do you mean? I've never had sex. What are you talking about? And the angel told her that, hey, listen, this is actually from God, and he's the son of God. And Mary, long story short, she believed him. Mary believed the angel. Now, what was God doing? What God was doing, he had already saw that mankind was now something that God created perfect, now all of a sudden was flawed. So God, what he did, according to the structure, this is the third most important point, that you must circle. God has already created the structure for all mankind. Write that down, circle it. God had already created. I want you to circle the word already. That's the most important part. He already created the structure for all mankind. That means you and I. And so what God did, he said, listen, She's going to have a baby. He'll be the son of God. And now, the reason what God was doing is he now needed to have a flesh body to come, be on the earth for just a little while, to show people all of the signs and wonders of God's work. And as we read the story, we all know the Son of God was Jesus, and Jesus began to do all these amazing things. Heal the sick, I mean, turn water into wine, come on. We've all heard, most of us, all of the miracles that were done in the Bible by Jesus. And then let's get to the best part. Jesus knew that he came to die. He knew that he was born so that he could die for all of our sins that started with Adam. Now, why did Jesus have to die, and what in the world does that have to do with my relationship, with my health, with my money? What does that have to do with 2020? It has everything to do with it. Because when Jesus died, you've got to catch this. According to John 3.16, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God so loved you and I that he what? He gave his only begotten. So what's happening here in the process, guys, in the structure, God is now reinstating the power that he once gave to man He's now re- he's given it back to man by sacrificing his own son. So if you're taking notes and you're trying to follow me, this is what you should be thinking. All right? I was created perfect, according to what, what you're learning here. Then Adam sinned. That then made me imperfect. That's number two. Number three, then God actually created another perfect child, through Mary, named Jesus, Jesus died for all, of, for all of my sins so that now I can go back to being perfect again. Now, we're talking spiritually. I want you to understand point number three. Physically, watch this now, physically, naturally, you and I will never be perfect. Because remember, Adam already sinned. But to atone, write this word down, A-T-O-N-E, atone, to atone the sin that Adam did, God sacrificed his son, Jesus. So now man, you and I, we're back in right standing again. We now, we, we got the power again. Now here's the problem. We got the power, but most of us don't know how to use the power. We have the power. This is, now, here comes the home run part of the call. We got it back. Somebody ought to shout, Woo! I got my power back. When Jesus died, and guess what? His birthday is in five days from today. 
When Jesus died, I got my power back. Oh, now that sounds great. But if you got your power but you don't know how to use it, then really you don't have nothing. And to the theme of today's call, I'm going to show you how to take control of all your power. I'm going to show you how to use all the power that you have. You've already been given it. But before I show you, I've got to actually draw attention to a major point. The reason why a lot of people believe that even while they're broke, busted, and disgusted, even while the relationship has been struggling, it's not going right, even while the health is actually bothering you and affecting you and afflicting you, and even while all these things, according to your five senses, according to your what? According to your five senses. What I see, what I hear, what I touch, what I smell, and what I taste. So those are the things that, those are your five senses. And those were given to you as a human being. But according to what I see, touch, feel, and hear, I don't feel so powerful. I don't feel so victorious. I don't feel, I don't feel much. Matter of fact, this year feels the same way as last year felt. And this is what I want to give you, point number three. When we talk about God, I want you to understand something. Anything you're ever going to get from God in the spiritual realm, anything you're ever going to get from God, anything you're ever going to manifest in the natural realm, anything you're ever going to get from God, you will only get it by faith. You will only get it by faith. See, write this down in your notes, please, and I want you to meditate on this. The devil uses fear. The devil needs fear to work, while God needs faith to work. Write this down. The devil needs fear. That's how he, he uses fear to control you, to seduce you. What his biggest thing he uses is fear. Write this down. The devil is after your thoughts. If he can get your mind, he got your body. He's after your thoughts. Scripture teaches us this. He's after your thoughts. Everything starts in your mind first because thoughts are things. The devil's after your thought life. All right? So anything you're going to get from God, and God, well, God needs faith. The devil needs fear. Write that down. It's so clear. If you can just see that, oh, I see, what's, I see why I don't feel so victorious. I see why I feel like, woe is me. I see. I see because the devil is using my lack of money. The devil is using my weight, my, 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 my health concerns, my relationships. My mama dropped me on my head, that all this and this and that and, and the virus and all. The devil is using fear to control my thought life. Now, watch this. Watch this. Because what I think, watch this, what I think, eventually I'm going to speak. What I think, I'm, what I think, eventually I'm going to speak. So with that said, let's get to the home run. Let's get to the climax of the call. When Jesus died on the cross for you and I, we got our power back. Okay, Ramasha, this has been a great call so far. You've informed me. Thank you very much. But, Ramasio. I need a revelation so I can create the transformation that I'm looking for. You're telling me about what happened, but what does that mean? I'll explain to you what it means. I'm now going to show you how to use your power that most of you don't even know that you have. And, I'm gonna, and I wish I had more time to really dive into how it all fully works, but I'm going to give you a condensed version of it today of how to use your power. Now, here we go. You ready? So now you understand, according to the story I just told you, that man is now back in right standing with God. Man is now back in right standing. You say, well, when did man come back? When God sacrificed his son and Jesus died on the cross, that means every sin that you and I will ever do 
will automatically, it's automatically been paid for. It's automatically, write that down. Whoa, 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 whoa. But I've been divorced 30 times. Whoa, 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 I went to jail. Whoa, 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 I used to be a drug dealer. I used to be a prostitute. Well, I shot Freddie, and Freddie shot Paul, and I did all this and this and that, and I, and I, I used to sell dope, and I, 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 I just, I'm a criminal. I, I, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a white-collar crime. I'm a liar. I'm a cheater. I'm this. I'm that. Hey, 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 stop. All the sin has been paid for. Write it down. It's been paid. I don't, what do you mean paid? It's been paid. The blood of Jesus covered our sins. But let's not forget about the devil. The devil's job is to make you, it is to remind you of your sins and remind you, you know you, hey, 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 don't be thinking too high. Now, you know you didn't mess up. You know you, whoa, 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 whoa. Don't be thinking all big like that. Come on back down here. Come on back down here to this hood. This is the devil, but I'm going to show you. Number one, the devil's automatically, he's already been defeated. He's already been defeated. This is not an opinion. This is a fact. He's already been defeated. Now, so how do I use my power? How do I use my power that I've been given that according to the word, I have dominion? I have dominion over my finances. I have dominion over my health. I have dominion over my relationships. What are you, what? listen, I dare you to take a little time and to discover all the power that was given to you when you were born, when you were created. I dare you. I double dare you. It's going gonna, it's gonna to freak you out. You're going to be like, what? I've got all that power? Are you, wait, are you serious? Because it don't feel like it right now. But yes, the, pro- the first problem I want everyone listening to the sound of my voice to understand is that most people, they don't see themselves according to the way that God sees you. See, thank God that you and I aren't the judge, because if we were the judge, we probably would have been done with us a long time ago. So this is why you ought to be thankful for God. But this is a big problem. See, everything starts here. If, if I can get you to not know that you're royalty, then you'll never have what a king or queen is supposed to have. Write that down, circle it. Write, listen, write it down. If I can get you to not know that you're royalty, then you'll never, ever claim what was – you'll never, ever come for your inheritance. You'll never, ever come for your inheritance because you don't know that you're royalty. So you'll always feel and live less than what you're supposed to live because you don't know that you're royalty. You don't know who you are. That's why that's such a big problem. Now, let's get to the main part. Here we go. How do I use my power? I'm going to show it to you, and I'm going to explain it to you slowly. When God created the sun, when he created the, the stars, When he created the oceans, God did one thing. He spoke. He spoke. He said, let there be, and boom, it showed up. He spoke. Write this down. He spoke. When he created man, he spoke. And man appeared. He spoke. When God gave dominion to Adam, when he handed over control of the world to one man, he said, Adam, whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. Woo! I get excited every time I say that. Every time I say it, I get excited. You mean, wait a minute, hold on a second here, Frank. Hold on, Frankie. You're telling me. This don't have nothing to do with I got to go get a 5.0 at school. This don't have nothing to do with I got to be born on the right side of the track and I got to be well connected and I've got to be this, this, that, and that, and I got to be seven feet tall and I got to be this and I got to go get a boob job and I got to go do all this stuff so I can feel that I'm about right for the blessing. You mean to tell me none of that's true? That's not true. You mean to tell me it don't matter if I was born in a car and my mom was an alcoholic, and my daddy, and my, my, my daddy was an alcoholic, and my mom was a prostitute or whatever. You mean to tell me 
none of that is true? No, none of that's true. There's no mistakes. God's perfect. When God spoke, there it was. If I had more time, I would take you through the specific scriptures so that you can discover for yourself. You know, my mom said something so key, so brilliant. She said, all that man is and all that man will ever be, he or she must discover for themselves. I want you to circle the word discover. See, if I tell it to you, ah, you probably doubt what it is I'm saying. You probably doubt what it is I'm saying. Now, mind you, I'm not looking for any more Facebook followers. I don't care how many people are listening to me right now. There is no, at the end of this, hey, sign up for my thing and buy my tape. No, 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 no. There is no promotion. It's free. But even though I'm giving it to you free, some of you don't. But that's why I love what she said. All that man is and all that man ever will be, he or she has to discover it for themselves. I double dog dare you before the clock strikes 2021 to get in the script. If you don't know the scriptures, all you have to do is ask. The Bible says any man or wisdom, any man or woman that lacks wisdom, all they have to do is ask. Send a text message. Send a Facebook message. Send something to me, whatever. And the scriptures will appear. I want you to discover this for yourself, that when God spoke, there it was. When God spoke, there it was. When Adam called it, there it is. Boom. So the first thing about your power that you have to know is that kings and queens, according to scripture, they speak. They speak. Slaves are the ones that don't speak. Slaves are the ones that don't say nothing. But a king and a queen, they speak. They decree a thing. Because that's what God did. The scripture tells us when you decree it, it shall come to pass. It shall be so. That's what it says. Now, again, it's very important, full disclosure, that you understand this ain't no magic trick, okay? Well, this ain't no, you're going to, what I'm doing right now is giving you an outline. An outline is very good, it's very informative, but ladies and gentlemen, you need the details to understand how your power fully works. Because the Bible says, it teaches us that you will prosper as your soul prospers. And on this call today, I haven't talked anything about what your soul is. So I don't even want to, and I'm not talking about some old song called the Soul Brothers. No, I'm talking about you have a soul. You are, you, you are created in three parts, three parts. I did not have enough time today to dive into that. But the scripture tells us that what God has planned for you is abundance and that you will prosper as your soul prospers. So that, that if you're taking notes, your next question should be, tell me more about my soul. I want to learn about the soul thing. I want to learn about, well, what's my soul and how does that work? But what I wanted to make known to you today is that nothing is going to change if you don't speak it into existence. Now, I want to give you one final point before we get out of here. This is very important. This is huge, what I'm about to say. When you speak a thing, there is a certain way, according to Scripture, you need to actually speak it. You have to call back into the remembrance when you speak something. You've got to call back into remembrance the name of Jesus to the believer. Because Jesus is who died on the cross for you and I. He's the one that gave us the victory. So according to Scripture, this is not according to Ramasio, it's according to Scripture, you have to, when you decree something, when you declare something, I'm declaring this in the name of of the Lord of Jesus Christ. And when you say that, it triggers, oh, that's right, that's right. According to God, according to God's structure, God, you said it, you created the rules. 
Jesus died for this sin here. Jesus, Jesus already paid the price for this. And so because he paid the price, prosperity is mine. Health is mine. Victory is mine. This is what you said. This is what you said. And your word doesn't lie. So if you're taking notes with me, I'm saying you must learn the process by when you speak. You can take dominion over anything you want as long as it's according to God's will. Write that down. Must be according to his will. Now, where am I going to find what God's will is? Read the book. You've got to start opening up the book. But right now we're talking about prosperity. We're talking about health. We're talking about all these good and plentiful things. God does, if you want a relationship and you want to be happily and healthy, God wants all, and you want to be rich and wealthy, yes, the answer to all that is yes, yes, yes. Because of the covenant that God had with Abraham, he approved all of that. Abraham did what he was supposed to do. God said, hey, listen here, everything that is a descendant of yours, and all of us, we are all descendants of Abraham, all of us. So all of those promises that were made way back, in, way back then, they carry forward to right now. This is according to the word. I can't make this stuff up. Okay? So, again, you do have the power, but you have to use the power. And the power comes from you decreeing. It comes from you speaking. Now, here's the last point that's very important. When you speak something, like when you decree that I will be rich, I will, I am healthy. A couple things here I want to teach you. You need to speak the results, number one. So now let's say you were physically sick. You need to speak. You need to, you need to speak the results. I declare, I decree by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ that I am healed today. I'm healed. Now, when you say that, I just, I just, gave, you, I just gave you a decree. By the, by, the, by the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, today, as in right now, I'm healed. In other words, I spoke the results, even though I may physically be sick. But I, I, what I did is I now, I'm using my mouth to speak things that aren't as though they were, okay? Now, here's the most important thing. What did I teach you earlier on this call? The devil is after your what? Your thoughts. So if the devil can get, and write this down, the battle really doesn't begin until you speak what it is that you're saying that you want, what you want to happen, whether it's riches, whether it's more money, new job, relationship, health, whatever, promotion, whatever. The, it, the battle doesn't even start. Write this down. It doesn't even begin until you speak it into existence. And once you speak it into existence, that is when now the enemy is going to work extra hard on your thought process to create doubt, to create uncertainty, uncertainty, to create, you know, I'm not sure if this is going to happen. And this is when, watch this, watch this, watch this, as you continue to develop your soul, you will get further and further away from what I see, what I hear, what I feel, excuse me, what I see, what I hear, what I touch, what I smell, and what I taste. You'll get further and further away from your five senses. Write this down. Your five senses have nothing to do with faith. It has nothing to do with all this power that God gave you. Remember, God was perfect. It wasn't about what he could touch, see, smell, feel. No, 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 no. It was his word. You've got to remember this. You've got to catch this. His, the power was in his word. It's what he said. That's it. But the enemy uses what? The enemy uses fear, doubt, you know, anxiety. I'm not sure. That's the enemy's place. That's the enemy's playground. The enemy, the devil is the father of all that confusion. That's what he does. He wants you to feel unworthy, unsure. I don't know. I'm a, but it looks like this, and they said this, and did you see this on the news? That's to the devil. That's what he does. And you have to learn, and this will happen as you develop your soul, you have to learn 
there's a difference between facts and truths. The facts may be I'm physically sick right now, technically, right? But the truth is, or by his stripes, according to his word, I'm healed. That's what you said. So you have to, what I'm saying is this. It all begins when you speak, if you're taking notes. Number one. Number two, the battle really it begins after you speak it. That's number two. Number two, that's, it, it, the battle begins after you speak it. Number three, how do you win the battle? The way you win the battle between what you spoke and the time you're waiting for something to physically manifest itself in front of you, whatever that thing is you're believing for, the way you win the battle is you cannot let doubt set in. You cannot begin to start to waver and become unsure because when you become unsure, the Bible says now you are double-minded. God was never double-minded in anything. He was absolute on everything. So the way you win the battle is when doubt comes in, because it will, you have to cast down that thought. This is the last thing I'm going to say on doubt. Write that down. The way you win the battle, you have to cast down every negative thought, every negative, and it's not easy. I want to tell you the truth. It's not easy because you and I are human beings. We are human. But understand this. Because of God's grace and his mercy, he knows we are human. That's why he sent his son to die for us, and he already paid the price for all our humanly issues. So you've got to understand. You've got to understand. Yes, he knows you're human. I know you're human. God knows you're human. Humans make mistakes every day, all day. He knows that. But because of his grace and his mercy, i got to show you how to actually access the spiritual realm. And when you learn how to access the spiritual realm, everything that you can physically see, it first of all starts in the unseen realm of a place that you can't see. Say that again. Everything that you can physically see, it first starts in the unseen realm, which is a place that you cannot see. So everything that is, everything that we can see that is, that exists right now, it was already in the spiritual realm. In other words, what am I saying? Every desire, every dream, every goal, every aspiration, every great, wonderful thing that you could ever think that you want, it, it already exists. See, you've got to get this last part. People always say, I'm waiting on God. God says, what do you mean? I'm waiting on you. I've already done everything. How could you possibly be waiting on me? What do you mean you're waiting on God? What do you mean waiting? God, he built the whole he built the whole entire world, including mankind, in six days, and he rested on the seventh day. What do you mean we're waiting? See, this is just some stuff we hear from people. I'm waiting on God. No, no, what do you mean you're waiting? God is already done. So what I want you to do from this call, as I hope that this call will stir your faith, that's the goal of this call, so it can begin a new journey in you. The journey is to know that you do have the power. Do you know how to use it? Have you done your research on the power and how the process works? That's what I'm doing. Oh, I'm telling you, it's like learning a whole new language. It's so exciting. Because imagine how, how bad it would feel to live this life and know that I have all this power, but I never used it. To know that I was royalty, but I, but I lived so far beneath what I really am. Imagine how that feels. And so I'm grateful that somebody would come on a call and as they learn, they're breaking it down to me for free. So again, I, again, the call here, guys, was to give you an outline to let you know that king and queens, they speak. Slaves are the ones that don't speak. You got to decree it. You got to speak it. And then once you speak it, You've got to fight the good fight. And the good fight to fight is now doubt and all these other things are going to try and come in to make you think it's not going to come to pass. And all you do is just say, I cast down that thought. I cast down that thought. And there's one more special treat that I want to give you. It's a special treat. We'll dive into it later on. I want you to understand that. When you begin to say your prayers and you pray, and again, I wish I had more time. I would love to technically break this down for you. But when you pray, prayer sends angels. Each and every single person on the world, in the world today, every single one of us, 
We all have an angel who's assigned to us. Most of us don't even know that. We have an angel that's assigned to us. How comforting is that to know? But it also says that prayer sends angels. But when you praise, God, I thank you. God, I love you. God, thank you. you. God, you have no rival. There's nobody like you. Nobody can do what you can do. You did it then. You're doing it now, and you'll do it forevermore. There is no competition. You stand alone. Everybody will bow at you. When you begin to praise, when you praise, praise sends God. Again, prayer sends angels, but prayer sends God. Now, again, I'm not making this up. You have to go learn the structure that God created. It's in the, it's in the Word. It's in the Bible. And it teaches you how to use all this power that you've been given. So, again, my aim today was to really make before you that all of your power comes from your mouth. It does. It comes through your mouth. You've got to decree a thing. You've got to speak. You are a king. You are a queen. You've got to start acting like it. And this is the part I love. Kings and queens, kings, they make decrees. That's it. They don't worry about the detail. Write that down. They don't worry about the detail. See, when you start getting into the details, that's God's business. That's not your business. Your business is to make the decree, to speak the thing. Because, see, the devil is in the details, and the devil will use the details to create doubt. And every time you begin to doubt what it is you spoke, then now guess what? Write this down. You have to start all over again. You spoke it. You spoke it. You're going to continue to keep praising. You're going to continue to keep believing. You're going to continue to keep casting down those negative thoughts. But every time you now speak doubt, when you speak doubt, you just canceled. You canceled the decree that you said. When you speak, I didn't say when you think doubt. That's why when doubt comes across your mind, I cast down that thought. I cast down that thought. Lord, I love you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I know it's already done. You promised me that in your word. I'm standing on your word. I'm not, I'm, I don't care about what I see. I don't care about what I feel. I don't care about what it looks like. I don't care about what she said, he said. I'm not, I don't care about what they said. I don't care about my five senses. I'm standing on your word. You said it. I believe it, that settles it. So every time doubt comes in, you've got to cast it down you got, because you can't speak doubt. When you begin to speak doubt, you just cancel what you said was going to happen. Now you say, well, why is this true? Was God ever doubtful on anything? Was he ever doubtful on anything? Absolutely not. Was God ever unsure? unsure? Well, I'm not really kind of sure. No, he was never unsure of anything. He was always very certain. And so, again, the point I'm making to all of you guys is that this is where your power lies. Your power doesn't lie in the Republican or the Democratic president. Your power doesn't lie within your mama or your daddy. Your power doesn't lie within your big or small bank account. Your power doesn't lie in your big or little muscles. Your power doesn't lie in your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. It doesn't lie in that. Your power lies in your mouth. Kings speak and slaves don't. So my goal here today is to ignite you in a way that's real and authentic to spark something in you, spark a, spark a flame that will get you, cause you to say, you know what, man, I want to start learning this stuff. Everything I just taught you, I just recently learned. Everything I just taught you, I recently learned. Everything. And when I say recently, I don't mean six months ago. I mean like five, ten days ago. Recently, and so I'm really excited to actually share this stuff with you because, see, some of you are getting ready to witness something very, very huge that's getting ready to happen. I can't tell you what it is right now, but trust me, you'll see it. And, 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 and when it happens, I know many of you listening are going to wonder, wait a minute, how did, how, did, how did he do that? I just told you right here on this call. I just told you right here on this call. Now, ladies and gentlemen, again, this call is not the end-all, be-all. This call is designed to start something inside of you, to start. This is not the end-all, be-all, even though I broke it down for you really good. But I didn't give you all the details, and I want you to learn how this thing really works. Guys, I love you dearly. There's nothing you can do about it. We started the call telling you 
that kings and queens speak and slaves don't. My prayer is that I don't want any of you to be a slave to the lender. I don't want any of you to be a slave to, you know, what happened yesterday. I don't want any of you to live beneath your God-given birthright. You are a king, you are a queen, but you got to act like it. You got to speak like it, walk like it, talk like it. So you better get started, baby. You better get in the word. You better learn who you are. You better align yourself up with the way God sees you. That's what it means when we talk about, you know, align yourself, come into alignment with the word of God. Stop being out of alignment, talking like that, acting like that. What you talking about? But see, when, you, when, 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 when we don't know, we just do what we do. But once upon a time I learned it's when we know better, we ought to do better. Now, again, I'm so happy to know that physically, naturally, we'll never be perfect. So I can now scratch that off my back because sometimes you make a mistake, you do this, you do that, blah, 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 and you tend to think, okay, well, maybe that's the reason why. And then for those of you that try and live your life so perfectly, so, so to speak, and you think, well, my question to you is where's your fruit? Where's your fruit? I'm not talking about where's the fruit? The fruit, baby. We, what, 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 was, what was the mandate that God gave Adam? Every, he gave to everybody? You are to what? To be fruitful and multiply. Where's your fruit? Where's the fruit? You see what I'm saying? So this is a message for everybody. It's not about who did more, who shot. No, no, forget all that. This is a message for everybody to understand that the Bible says you should be growing from faith to faith. And a lot of people talk about faith. They preach on faith. Heard about faith, but where's the faith? So really, they're, they're not living it. They don't understand how it really works. And I became curious. I became inquisitive because I, I believe in all this big stuff. But how do I do it? How do you get over there? How do you make it happen? And no, it's not just hard work. That's not true. Hard work is a part of it. There's got to be something more to this than just hard work, and it is. And I'm excited to discover it, and I'm more excited to teach it. With that said, guys, always remember, in all that you do, there's nobody in the entire world any greater than you. Hey, guys, I love you guys dearly. I want you to have a happy, safe, grateful Merry Christmas, and we will see you guys next Sunday. Goodbye, everybody.